たしました。Hi, my name is Vitamin D Stella, and welcome back to some Cafe Stella. If I look a little tired, I probably am, but I really wanted to play this before going to bed. And it's now October, and you know what that means? It means beanie and sweater season, which is my favorite season. But guess what? It's not very sweater season here where I live. It's still like over 110 degrees. It's really hot out here. But you know what? It's okay. My hair is always in my face now. And it's really annoying. So I just put on a beanie. I use it more as an excuse now because, again, it should be sweater weather season, but it's not. But, anyways, I like beanies. Also, let's get straight into this video, shall we? <laughs> let's not waste too much time. Oh, by the way, there's something I wanted to say. And there's no promises, but I'm going to try to upload a little more. So, my plan here was upload Senran Baka. What? What the freak am I talking about? Cafe Stella and King Koi. You know, try to get at least three videos of one and then two or two and three or something like that. Something along those lines. Again, no promise. It depends how I feel too. I don't want to burn out either because that sucks a lot. It's happened to me and it's not fun. I do want to keep continuing enjoying doing this, you know, and by overdoing it means not very much enjoyment. So I'll do my best to avoid that. And the way you guys can make it up to me. By hitting that lick and commenting something nice, not actually nice, okay? Don't be such a smart, just comment something, not actually something, but something. I'd appreciate it, anyways. Let's get straight into this video, shall we? <laughs> the Zoman soon returns wearing her shrine maiden clothes. All right, we left off on we left off on we were about to confront the butterfly and. Yeah, we're about to confront the butterfly. Seeing this, Mikoto rises to his feet. Let's start. Kanda. With a flourish of her cloak, Akizuki san begins to intone for a low, in a low, hushed voice. She's speaking words I've never heard before. Some kind of spell, maybe? I reckon it's a language from another country, or perhaps another world. That's scary. What was that? Sudden chill sweeps through the grounds, along with the sound of ice cracking. No, forming. Hey, yo, she's making the ghost erect? Alright, that's dumb. Alright, I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> she's erecting a ghost. They could have, they could have literally used any other word. Erecting. That's hilarious. I like when I get erect. Here we go. The Zoban and I stand together, scanning our surroundings. I cannot not pretend I didn't just say that. Oh my god. I'm sorry, you guys deserve better. Akizuki san's chanting eventually comes to a stop. And then. I sincerely do not apologize. That stupid butterfly is out for blood. Akizuki san turns around and speaks to the Zoban. No. To someone behind the Zomin. Both Nozomi and I quickly turn around as well. And there it is. That stupid blood butterfly. And it's a woman. That's crazy. I mean, not that it... Look, not that it matters, but I just thought it would be like a mean sounding... Dude sounding butterfly. You know what I mean? A translucent ethereal butterfly. Flutters through the air around the Zoman upon crimson glass like wings. Is it the one who whispered in that faint voice just now? I couldn't hear it very well though. But one thing is clear its voice was unmistakably a woman's. Not at all what I was expecting. Exactly what I said. See, he gets it. I thought the red butterfly would sound much more eerie and frightening. This guy gets it? I hadn't imagined it to have such a quiet, somber voice. Uh, I don't think I could. That sounds like something I would say. I hardly leave the room, except for work. 
Akizuki-san interprets, not interrupts, interprets for us, filling in the blank between, blanks between its words. I heard something, so I just, but I think I'm good. Oh, so it's currently 8 p.m. and people are trying to fall asleep, so I'm trying not to be too loud. It appears that we were able to communicate with it after all. Zomi bows toward the butterfly. The red butterfly gently flaps its wings and circles around her. I can't tell if there's any meaning behind this action, but at the very least, it doesn't appear to be hostile. I'm confused. The events that had led us to this moment, the thoughts now swirling inside my head, don't add up. First, let's go to the Wagahai I'm Takamine Kosei, a university student and uh, Zomi's boyfriend. The red butterfly floats before each of us in turn as if bowing and greeting. You had that name for 300 years and you forgot it? I don't understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuses, excuses. Murderous butterfly. It's wor homicidal butterfly. Its words are slowly but surely becoming clearer. Perhaps the memories of its former life are coming back to it. The red butterfly continues to speak. Don't you just find the supernatural so interesting? Look, I'm no firm believer in anything, literally anything. Like, for example, what I mean by that is like how we came about humanity, how if there's a higher power out there or if there's the supernatural. I don't necessarily deny its existence, but I also am not like, oh, yeah, it's for sure out there because I have not seen any concrete evidence. And because I have not seen that concrete evidence, I choose to just be neutral and be like, OK, well. It's possible. Or it's not. But yeah. The butterfly's words catch us all by surprise. If what it says is true, it's not an evil spirit or vengeful ghost or anything cliche like that. But instead, are you sure? It literally tried to kill you twice. Are you saying. You're the god of this shrine? いいえ。かつて人々が勝手に私を祭り上げただけのこと。あくまでも私は人であり女であり母でした。神は別にいます。300年前。この地で私を殺した神が。Ow, ow, my back is itchy and I cannot reach. That is so frustrating. Help. God killed you? Here? Oh, it wasn't you? Wait, what? Once before on the brink of death, I turned back the hands of time itself. I had that power within me. That was why God wanted to eliminate me to protect the natural order. Whoa! This route has gotten even more interesting. Like, screw Nozomi, it's all about this route story. Which includes her, yeah, but like... Whoa! Oh, she was just like him? Yo. That's so interesting. Hi. Ooh. The red butterfly flutters nimbly around the grounds. Well, now, that is very interesting. See, we've had the wrong idea of the butterfly. It's not homicidal. Maybe it was just trying to warn us. It's certainly possible. <laughs> but what a plot twist. I was already like, I've been firing shots at it. It turns out it, that was not true. The butterfly is not the culprit. <laughs> 
Zomi shouts tearfully. Don't you wish you could change things? Accepted her fate. When I hear those words, I feel a stab of pity. ならば転生していただけないでしょうか。もうあなたがこの地に執着する理由はないのではありませんか。うん、300年も祀られてきてやったのだ。もう自由になればいい。それにお言葉ですが、あなたの影響で別の蝶々がこの神社に集まってくる
After a while, her dance comes to an end. Nozomi takes a deep breath. The air softens. Already hard at work, huh? Nozomi wears a slightly embarrassed look as she comes walking towards me. I can't believe you're practicing the dance again. What changed your mind? I gotta say, she wasn't at all what I was expecting. I thought she'd be much scarier. But in reality, she had been quiet and sorrowful. That's only natural, seeing as she's been haunting you. Zomi smiles sheepishly, but I understand her confusion. Okay, don't answer the question, Dame Butterfly. My gut tells me the red butterfly is not a malevolent spirit. While we can't deny the fact that she's been haunting you, Nozomi, I don't think she means you any harm. That does make sense, I guess. But those two accidents had in fact happened. The first time a giant bell almost fallen right on top of Nozomi. Second time a speeding car had run a red light and nearly ran her over. <laughs> we still don't know what caused those accidents. Twice in a row? That's too much of a coincidence. Also, we don't know why the red butterfly decided to haunt you instead of going to sleep either. Maybe, yeah. But she goes into hibernation every year, right? What reason would she have to follow you around? I get that you want to defend her, but come on. That's a bit of a stretch. You're such a kind person, Nozomi. I can't resist the urge to pat her on the head, and she breaks into a shy smile. Yeah, you're welcome. Why? Not like anyone's watching us, except the red butterfly. Yeah. Don't remind me. But embarrassing or not, I'll choose to flirt with Nozomi any day of the week. I am a man, after all. Yeah, I'm getting a bit hungry. Zomi's sandaled feet quickly patter off across the grounds. Suddenly, something draws my gaze toward the sky. Towards the spot the red butterfly had disappeared last night. I am simply waiting. Waiting for what? I asked out loud just as I had last night. If we could just figure that out, I'm certain we could resolve this situation. In fact, I'm convinced of it. What do we have to find out? Oh, excuse me. What do we have to do to find out? You don't have to shout. Stop embarrassing me. I hurry back towards the house. It's probably just my imagination. But I have a feeling the red butterfly is smiling down at me. Huh? Yeah, as soon as possible. Tonight, even. After arriving at work, I quickly sought out Akizuki-san and Mikael for advice. I told them I wanted to know what it was the red butterfly was waiting for. If we figured that out, we could grant her her wish. If we grant her her wish, then I'm sure she'll stop hunting Nozomi. 
Or better yet, she might even be willing to be reincarnated once we get rid of whatever lingering regret she has. That's a problem. Huh? Why? Oh. Oh, you're right. I'm tired, but I'm not like dying to sleep tired, okay? Don't get it twisted. What's it called? Typically, I start yawning at 8, so. Yeah, it's 8 30. <laughs> In other words, if we can't find a solution by then, the red butterfly will have to be eliminated. That gives us only four days. Isn't there any way we can get an extension? Stakes seem very high. Don't like that. So you're saying Sunday is our deadline regardless? Then this really is our last chance to talk to the red butterfly. Still, if we can give her whatever it is she's waiting for by Sunday night, we just might make it. That may be true, but we're doing this to help the red butterfly. Why wouldn't she want to talk to us? We're willing to help her find what she's been waiting for. Shouldn't that make her happy? That's exactly what I was thinking. Maybe she doesn't even want their help. That's true. If anything, we'd just be wasting our final chance, I guess. I am simply waiting. Those words alone give us very little to go on. We don't even know who or what she's waiting for, but we have to do something. Nozomi seems the one I hope the red butterfly. Well, not just her. I do too. Honestly, no, it's just for her. Nozomi, at the very least, doesn't think those accidents were the red butterflies doing. She says she doesn't hasn't been getting any of her usual hibiji. That's why we didn't realize that the red butterfly was haunting us until a while after the new year. <laughs> the red butterfly got to see some of that action on the New Year's. Nice. But her sixth sense is telling her it has no evil intentions. So do I. I don't think the red butterfly is evil. That's the million dollar question. Originally, the red butterfly had been haunting the Akaiwa shrine itself, but something had caused it to begin haunting Nozomi personally. Still, Nozomi would be heartbroken if the red butterfly had to be ruthlessly put down. For, bo <laughs> For both Nozomi's sake and the butterflies, I want to find a way to save her. Well, if we can't ask her directly, I try to think. But nothing comes to mind. What if we make the butterfly like type something out or write something down? Is that possible? Maybe it just can't say it. I'm running out of ideas here. The only thing we know is that this red butterfly is actually the soul of a person who's been worshipped as a god at the Akaiwa shrine. And for some reason, this lady Akaiwa is now haunting Nozomi. That's all. That was well, the three of us are racking our brains. Nozomi enters the room. Nozomi. Hey, 
詳しく調べたいのだ。カンヌ氏である父親から何か聞いてはいないかえっと、うちは安産祈願の神社なんですけど。もともとは赤い噂様が子供好きな優しい女性だったらしいんです。セブチャールドバーズ。What would be considered unsafe childbirth? Playing Russian roulette while giving childbirth? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> What? Like, a, like, you guys mean like a childbirth that goes successfully, you know? Like, it comes out healthy and alive, you mean? What is an unsafe childbirth? I don't understand. So, no, Kodamazuki no Tokoroga. It's no Monica, Akachanga, Buji, Maredo, Nitte, Gamo Kaker, Kamisamani, Henkashta. Oto Sankarava, so Kikasaretimas. Goku, Goku, Tsuna, Honobono to study you this, eh? Shikashi, Zibun Bonyari to stay to that. So, in it, Saiwa, Ayatsua, Kamini, Korosaretano. もっとドロドロとした逸話が残っていても良さそうだがもしかすると伝承が変化していった可能性もありますねミカドナキズキさんのフォルダーアームスペンシブリーレミトラスキンロクロさんディレクリーデクイキスルーションウォルビーデクリーデスオープデクリーンシュランプリスティムセルフコーシェコンゴワタシガキコーカワタシナコトダシ No, I think it's better if I ask. Mikado's right, and the shrine actually does have some kind of horrific backstory. I get the feeling Rokuro san would be hesitant to tell Nozomi about it. But as a guy, he might be more willing to open up the mirror. Tadaima, Denma ni Dereko to Gatikimasen. Hashin on the Atoni, Onamaito, Koyo Kenwo. Kosekun, Mada Oto san denai no? Nope. I guess he's busy. This is already the fifth time I've called Rokuro san's cell phone. How do I left a voicemail? He still hasn't gotten back to me yet. I can't imagine Rokuro san being so careless. Really? そうそうだからお母さんや私がしっかりしないとね。She shrugs with exasperation. Ah, so Nozomi was responsible in the family all along. Well, if you write about his phone, then we're in trouble. I need to ask him about Lady Akaiwa as soon as possible. 私、お母さんのスマホにかけてみるよ。Oh, good idea. えっと、これ。Nozomi dug. Through her purse, but then cocked her head in puzzlement. What's wrong? Mmm, <laughs> interesting. She sticks out her tongue. So much for being the responsible one. Tee hee my a a a. Like father, like daughter, I guess. Suddenly the doorbell rings. Wait, let me get it. It's late, so. And she's already gone. Good grief. She wasn't listening to me at all. Konbanwa! Oh, look. Akane. Oh, it's you here tonight, son. Chan! Mei chan ga watashi no smaho motte kite kuremashita! Thanks, Akane. Zomi waves her phone above her head. Thank God for Hiyuchi Dani san. So kind, so thoughtful. What would we ever do without her? I cheer and applaud, giving her a standing ovation. Huh? I look over at my phone lying on her desk. The call ID displays Rokuro san's name. I hurriedly pick up. Hello? Sorry, I know you must be busy. No, nothing wrong, per se. I obviously can't straight up tell him that Nozomi is being haunted by Lady Akaiwa herself. Rather, I dodge the question and bring up the subject of the Akaiwa Shrine's origins instead. Would you mind telling me a story? 
赤岩様には幼い一人娘がいたんだその娘が村でも評判になるくらいの器量よしでねあまりに美しかったせいで鬼人に目をつけられて、hey, yo. 角沸かされそうになったんだ We got a ditty god <laughs> A god who kidnaps people Sounds more like the work of a demon if you ask me 残酷な神様って実は多いからねだがその時に赤岩様が身を挺して娘を守ったんだ You mean she managed to drive away this fierce god? Ah, Haha, a Tsuyoshi to a Yoku Tamorane. So, I Akaiwa Samawa, Kodomo Mamor, Kingami Samatoshi, Matsuran. That's actually a sick origin story. I think we just say like an episode or two ago that it was kind of lame. Like, no, this is actually pretty sick. So, I got Uchino Jinja no Ichio no Naritachisa. Do they? Sanko ni not die? I feel my bow. What did that story have to do with whatever lady Akai was waiting for? Oh, sorry. I'm here. Thank you for humoring me. And sorry for calling so late. For now, that's the only thing I can say. Same as ever. Yeah, I'll pass you to her. Nozomi. Pause the conversation and hand my phone to Nozomi. She nods and takes it. <laughs> Why won't you just say your name? Guess she's just having fun with her dad. Oh well. They haven't spoken in a while, so I'll give them a long time. Kind of sucks that Yuchidani and Suzune have no idea what's going on. Yuchidani's son comes up to me while I watch Nozomi chatting happily on the phone. Yeah, something like that. Since I can't tell her the truth, I have to be evasive. Sorry, Yuchidani san. Huh? Oh, well, maybe? Though she seems to be misunderstanding things, I choose not to correct her. Mostly because it'd be too much work. Well, sort of. I relayed the story that Okuro san had told me about Lady Akaiwa's incredibly beautiful daughter and how she had protected her from a malevolent god who tried to abduct her. Both Nozomi and Hiochidani san listened silently. However, When I finish the story, Hiuchidani san hesitantly interjects. Bro, what? Huh? What? That's what I said. Are you not gonna tell us? Hey, yo, I don't know if you know what I'm saying. I don't know if you Yes, the soothing voice. I love it. It never gets old. Another version of the story? The next day, Nozomi and I asked Shiksan what she knew about the legend of Akaiwa Shrine. Her answer to which I just finished expressing my surprise. It sounds on some broken telephone game type shit. And both of these are also different from the version Rokuro san told me. Which one of them is the truth? If we don't even know that, we can't hope to find out what the red butterfly is waiting for. Oops, that's what I was thinking too. But in Rokuro san's version of the story, there wasn't anything that Lady Akira was waiting for. That being the case, I can't discount the possibility that his might be wrong. We need to do a bit more digging. We only have one more opportunity to speak to the red butterfly. 
If we can't get rid of her lingering regrets right then and there, we won't get another chance. Oh, sorry. We didn't explain everything to you yet, did we? I gave Shiksan a quick summary of the situation. Zomi is currently being haunted by the red butterfly, and it's possible that the butterfly is the cause of her two near accidents. Two reasons. First, Nozomi's sixth sense hasn't been acting up. And second is the impression we got when we spoke to it. It didn't seem at all like the sort of spirit who would hurt people for no reason. If anything, she seemed like a very gentle person. Akizuki-san shares our opinion, for the most part. Mikado says that, in terms of probability, the accidents couldn't have simply been coincidences. Objectively, you're definitely right. Shikisan hadn't been there with us that night. She doesn't know what the red butterfly is like, so it's only reasonable that she'd think that way. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that's not funny. No, it's funny. The zombie's expression darkens. That's why we're searching for the thing the red butterfly is waiting for. If we can find it for her and get rid of any lingering regrets she has, she might be willing to be reincarnated. We've already come across three different variations. Good point. She's been waiting to see her missing daughter. That certainly would make sense. That's also true. It'd be impossible for her to meet someone who's no longer in this world. Yeah, you're amazing, Shikisan. Cool and intelligent. Nozomi gives Shikisan a big hug. How does she even know all these old JoJo references? <laughs> as a microorganism, I imagine as a germ. I'd be pretty mad if my daughter was a germ. Oh, whoops. No! I wrote my temples and she up pills me with counter arguments. This definitely won't work. In fact, it just poses even more problems. <laughs> yeah, maybe she became something cute, like a cat, at least. Or even an alpaca. <laughs> Shiksan heaves a sigh. But I already asked Rokuro-san to tell me what he knew. Where else could I get information from? Really? This is why I love her. Why are you speaking for me? 
You're gonna make me do it? You're awful, Nozomi's son. Now that we've been dating for a while, it's starting to become quite clear who wears the pants in our relationship. Definitely not Kosei. Alright, fine. I'll be back. Me again? It's in this moment that the hierarchy of our relationship is firmly established. So it seems. Oh, Kosei! Oh, look, our favorite loser. Arriving on campus, we bump into Hirota, who I haven't seen in a few days. Hey. Konnichiwa, Hirota san. Konnichiwa. Kyou mo kawaii ne. Thanks for answering roll call for me. Since we've been prioritizing Talisman's protection, Zomi and I have been together for several days now. As a result, we've both been taking a voluntary leave of absence from school. Be. Not yet. That's why we're here, actually. We need to look into a few leads. You know what's even crazier, too? If the ladies at the cafe know nothing, this guy literally knows absolutely nothing. What's her vision? Really? What did she tell you? An unexpected hint from a most unexpected place. Could it be that Hiroto has the answer we've been searching for all along? No way. That's right, we heard that too. めっちゃ美人の娘さんがいて。そこも一致してます。その家にイケメンだけど無職の男が転がり込んで、親子ともども攻略して。えよ。え。What?Why are you sure that God isn't a devil? <laughs> Every guy's dream. Yep. <laughs> oh, I bet you do. What kind of origin story is that? How could, how would that make it a shrine for safe childbirth? Dang it. I'm trying to be serious here. Nah, that's the truth. This is the best route in any visual novel. I know. Naturally, Hiroto's vision comes as a shock to Nozomi. That's the least important part. That's what you find fault with? There's a lot more wrong with that story if you ask me. That's what I'm saying. Let's just see what the books in the library have to say first. I'm sure we can trust them more than we can trust Hiroto. No offense. <laughs> At any rate, Nozomi and I head towards the library. Yeah, everything was pretty much identical to what Rokuro's not telling. In the library, we had found several. What? In the library, we had found several guidebooks about the town's history commissioned by a local ward office. Having been written during the early Showa period, the pages were yellowed with age. There had been a number of documents concerning the Akaiwa Shrine as well. However, neither of them had contained anything we didn't already know. So it would seem. All the books seemed to agree with him, and not to mention he is the shrine priest. But knowing that doesn't do us any good. We still have no idea what it is the red butterfly could be waiting for. Hmm. There must be some place we can find other older books about the subject. 
Maybe the public library in town? Or if nothing else, we could try searching online. Yo, yo, Nozomi pulls out her phone from her jacket pocket. Nozomi apologizes to her phone. She's always been as honest as they come. Just tell them you'll probably be back on Monday, so there's no need to worry. Nozomi's eyes, which had been looking down guiltily, suddenly widen. What is it? Hmm. Something about that catches my attention. Perhaps Nozomi's school library has the literature we're looking for. Yeah, right. That'd be way too convenient. But if they actually were there, they'd be tossed out this weekend and we'd lose the chance to read them forever. Alright. Nozomi. I decided on our next destination. Your school. Yeah, I'd probably want to do that too. If I knew that. It's been a while since Nozomi has last put on her school uniform. We went back home so she could change before we went to her school. Otherwise, she'd stand out. Hmm? What do you mean? I'm coming with you, of course. Timer went off. Wow. It's, it's now bedtime, basically. If we're not together, the talisman won't be able to protect us both. <laughs> yes, sir. It's okay. Uh, crap. In her regular clothes, Nozomi hadn't looked much different than any other student at college. But if I were to show up at Nozomi's school in my regular clothes, I'd stick out like a sore thumb. In fact, somebody might even call the police. Well, alright. I guess you'll have to take this instead. I take out the talisman and hand it to Nozomi. You know what would be crazy? If Kose went into Nozomi's room and then somehow a car ended up in her room and killed Kose. <laughs> no, no, and, and get this. Nozomi's room is on the second floor and the car somehow ended up there. <laughs> Nozomi pushes the talisman back to me. You're the one who's being haunted. It's obviously better if you hold on to it. I'll be fine. You take it. Thrust the talisman back to Nozomi. Thrust the talisman back to Nozomi. Oh my god, not this again. Paper. Rock, paper, scissors. Come on, please. She pushed it back to me again. No, you take it. We come to a stop in the middle of the sidewalk, pushing the talisman back and forth. No, no, it should be you. No, no, no. No, 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 no. This is getting a snow. I can't believe how stubborn you are. All this useless arguing has gotten us both out of breath. In any relationship, it's the man's job to shoulder the danger. Ask any couple you know. Hi, nice of you. She really does sound just like a mom. As I've come to expect from Nozomi san. She's treating me like a helpless son. Fine. There's only one way to settle this. Yes! Yes! Finally, I've been saying this for three episodes. Two, three episodes. I don't know, but long enough. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> I didn't think that would actually come up. That's funny. If I win, you have to take the talisman while you're searching for books in the library. Fine. Works for me. 
But if you feel even the slightest bit of danger, I want you to call me right away. I'll come running as fast as I can. I'm well aware of that. For the zombie's sake, I'm willing to take that risk. For the sake of love, I'm willing to besmirk the good name of Takamine Kosei. Kosei. But let's hope it doesn't come to that. Bring it. We clench our hands in the fists at the same time. What? I'm just gonna play scissors. No. Well, no way you're gonna fall for that. As long as smirks with confidence. Dang it, she's playing mind games with me. In that case, she's probably planning to counter my scissors with rock. Which means I just need to counter her counter with paper. But wait, what if she knows I know her plan and can counts as my counter to her counter with scissors? <laughs> Mm, uh, crap, I don't know what to think anymore. That's a that's a nice mind game to do. Huh? Wait, I still need more time to uh, fine. I feel uneasy but I have no choice. Um uh uh I freeze hesitating. Can you shut up? Stop trying to trick me, no feigning allowed. <laughs> she smiles fearlessly. A sense of dread runs down my spine. I feel like I'm on a certain luxury liner. Enough messing around. Just get on with it. Final answer? Final answer. I swear, Nozomi's actually a middle aged mom on the inside. How does she even remember who wants to be a millionaire? Rock, paper, scissors, and yo, whatever she said, yeah. I threw out scissors. Zombie rock. Dang, that sucks. Kosei is a bozo. Literally anything but that. Zombie pumps her fist into the air victoriously. I put it right into her hands. Thank you, scissors, and thank me too. Shut up! Now come on, we're going to school. Hi. <laughs> I grab the zombie's head and head for the ticketing gate. She skips happily beside me as I we as we walk. You can't be salty, man. It's rock paper scissors. Seeing my chance, I slip the talisman stealthily into her bag. All according to plan. I turn to the side and sneer villainously. Hey, hey, hey. It's my win, zombie. Nope, nothing. Come on, let's get going. Putting on an expression of nonchalance, I pass through the ticket gate. Sorry, Nozomi, you have to forgive me just this once. I'm only doing this because I love you. A little while later, Nozomi returned safely from her school library with the book we'd been looking for. In the meantime, nothing out of the ordinary had happened to me either. Everything worked out fine. Well, almost everything. Oh? <laughs> That's a great spot to end it though, because I gotta go to bed. I'm gonna be so tired if I don't sleep. Okay, seven, six, seven, six, seven, six, right here. Yup, 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 yup. Okay, well, I'm gonna wrap it up there. It was a chiller episode, it has been a whole lot of investigating, as you guys saw. It was definitely crazy. I can't say it was nothing crazy because it was crazy and it was interesting. It felt like a history lesson and I'm not against that. I thought it was cool. But with that being said, that's really all I have to say about this episode. You know, this this route somehow just, just getting more and more interesting. More than I thought it would be, you know. Again, this whole supernatural thing is just very interesting to me. I can't wait to see what happens at the end, what they find out. You know, if it's something crazy or if it's just something dumb and small or I don't know. I don't know what to expect. But I'm excited. I'm really looking forward to it. But with that being said, I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you so freaking much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you guys did enjoy this video, please hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And let's hit a thousand subscribers, please. Please, let's make it happen. Please, subscribe. Tell everybody to subscribe. Tell everybody you know to subscribe. Share this channel. Share this video. Share everything. Please. We're so close, but so far away. 
please. <laughs> Anyways, I'm out of here. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next video as always. Y'all stay safe. And as always, until next time.